Hello, friends. These daring, strong, undemanding, and very intelligent animals have few equal predators in the wild. People have always had ambivalent feelings for the wolves. On the one hand, it's fear and hatred. On the other, respect and admiration. What kind of animals are they really? And what's their life like? Modern representatives of the canine family that includes 35 animal species appeared on Earth over a million years ago, and wolves are one of the most prominent representatives. A few centuries ago, wolves could be found throughout most of Europe, Asia, and North America. Today, human influence has caused a steady decline in their numbers as wolves have been ruthlessly exterminated to protect herds of domestic animals. Now, they can no longer be found neither in the British Isles, nor in France or Denmark, or Belgium, or Switzerland, or Japan. Wolves are social animals. They usually live in packs of six to ten individuals of different ages, although sometimes the number of individuals in a pack can reach up to 20 wolves. At the head of the pack are always the wolf leader, the strongest male in the pack, and his she-wolf. The leader is easily recognizable by his high tail, because none of the other wolves in the pack are allowed such liberties. The life of the pack isn't all that simple, it's actually very hard. There's strict discipline in the pack, and there are many rules that have to be followed in order for the pack to survive. No member of the pack has the right to dispute the leader's opinion in any way. He has complete authority over the pack and bears the huge responsibility for the safety of his family, the distribution of roles in it, as well as over the choice and protection of the pack's territory. In the event of an impending danger, it is the leader who makes all the decisions, and the pack has to follow his lead. He's also friendly with members of his pack. All the members comply with their pack hierarchy. Wolves are divided into ranks, from strongest to weakest. Fighter wolves are an important part of the pack. Both males and females can hold this rank. Their task is to train their relatives and, in case of danger, only fighters go into battle. The strongest wolf among the fighters can eventually replace the leader in case he dies. The important function of raising cubs is performed by the she-wolf leader. Her task is to protect the future hunters. When the pack is attacked, the female tries to hide the cubs who are still too young and weak to fight. There's a single individual in the wolf pack who's supposed to notify the pack of any impending danger. In cases of danger, the cubs are supposed to obey their older brothers. Guardians are inexperienced warriors whose role is to train their relatives and obey the she-wolf. The she-wolf leader keeps all the females of the pack in strict subordination. Only in the summer, when they help the dominant couple raise their cubs, does the she-wolf show some leniency towards them. The wolf's mating season begins in early spring. In anticipation of the offspring, the she-wolf arranges a lair in a secluded and inaccessible place. The entrance to the den has to have a good view of the area so that the parents can react to any potentially dangerous situations. Two months after mating, usually in May, five to six cubs are born. The birth of 10 to 15 cubs is possible, but extremely rare, and in this case, half of the brood usually dies. During summers, the wolf's diet is quite diverse. It includes birds, hares, as well as frogs, insects, and even berries and herbs. Hungry wolves don't mind feeding on carrion either. Wolves always choose the least dangerous prey. They prefer to hunt weak animals, old, very young, emaciated, injured, or sick. Thus, they are often called the forest cleanup crew. But livestock has always been the easiest prey for the wolves. That's why people declare war on them. However, the euphoria from the man's victory over the wolves quickly dissipated when the fields got invaded by the rapidly increasing population of hares, deer, and elk, which were no longer kept under control by the gray predators. Thus, strict regulations were imposed over the wolf hunt. However, the thrill that people experienced hunting wolves remained in their memory and made hunting these animals extremely popular. For example, winter hunting with flags is considered to be one of the traditional Russian ways of wolf hunting, 
Flags are what the hunters call scraps of bright, mostly red fabric attached to ropes or thin sticks that enclose the pack's territory. Foreign objects, as well as traces of people, alert and scare the beast away. The alarmed wolf begins to look for a way out, but doesn't dare step over the flags and eventually runs out to the shooting line. As for the danger the wolf poses to humans, it only exists in exceptional cases. The program for preventing the spread of rabies in wolves is much more effective today than it was in the past, and so the accidental attacks on humans have been less common. In most wolf habitats, it is people who hunt them, not the other way around. In natural conditions, wolves usually howl after dusk and before dawn, when they are most active. During the day, they rest and only talk when absolutely necessary. It's usually just a short howl or a yelp. Howling and whining is how wolves communicate. It is their language which can express a threat and longing and a request for help and a victory cry. The wolf chorus can most often be heard in winter when animals arrange collective hunts for large ungulates. In a powerful, well-coordinated chorus, they inform the other packs that these hunting grounds are occupied. If the hunting pack is silent, it means that it is either small in number or is in ambush. Lone wolves never howl. The wolf's hearing works in a way that allows them to accurately determine the location of a source of a sound, even at a distance of several kilometers from it. The she-wolf, looking for a male to mate with, howl calls him until she hears his response after which she quiets down and just waits. The leader always eats first, while the others wait at some distance for him to fill up. A hungry wolf can eat up to 10 kilograms of meat at a time. They hide the remains of the prey and return to it as needed. Wolves are very hardy animals. They can trot at a speed of nine kilometers per hour for a long time, looking for prey, and when they find it, they can pursue it at triple the speed and they can even accelerate to a speed of 60 km per hour at the moment of attack. After many hours or even days of pursuit, the great success for wolves is considered to be the opportunity to use deceitful maneuvers and kill several of the weakest animals of the herd at once. The life of these predators depends entirely on hunting, and they prefer to do it on their own territory. They diligently protect the integrity of its borders. When it is violated by a strange pack, a fierce fight occurs between the owners and the newcomers, ending in the expulsion of the weakest. All males of the pack unconditionally obey its leader, while he sees it necessary to constantly remind his subordinates of his superiority, rushing at them once in a while. The other wolves demonstrate complete humility by pressing their ears and falling to the ground in front of him. after which they try to get out of his sight as soon as possible. And what about the lone wolves? A strong adult wolf with an independent temperament can refuse to obey the leader and choose to leave the pack. He then goes to live alone until he joins another pack or creates his own, becoming the leader. And that's all for today, friends. Share your thoughts about today's episode in the comments below the video, and be sure to write about what you think about wolves. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.